Hi friends, my name is Julie and welcome back to my farm. Not too long ago, I let you guys know that we sold off most of our chicken flock. They had gotten old and they weren't really laying eggs anymore. And I wasn't really sure what the future of our egg production on this farm was gonna be. I did think about taking a break from chickens for a while. Of all the animals on the farm, they're really the ones that I'm the least excited about anymore. Which is kind of sad because in the beginning they were really uh, what we started with and what got us going. But I do really like eggs and of course my customers really like eggs. And after not having a lot of chickens for a few weeks I decided that I really did want to start another flock. And really the most economical way to do that would have been to buy started pullets, which are young female chickens that are about ready to lay. And then I could have got egg production going right away. But in that realm, there's really not a lot of choice with breed. And one of the things that I found really fun about chickens in the beginning were all the different breeds you had to choose from and raising those different breeds and seeing their different personalities and egg production develop. So even though it definitely costs more to raise some chickens from chicks, I decided that was the way I wanted to go. Unfortunately, this time of year, it can be a little bit difficult to find chicks. A lot of hatcheries will shut down production this time of year because laying goes down in their hens and with the cold weather, it's a little more risky to ship chicks. But I was lucky to find a hatchery in Texas that I had never used before and we ordered some chicks from there. And then I also was lucky enough to score uh, 15 American breast chicks from a farm locally called Fat Chicken Farm. And this is one of the hens. They're old enough now where you can tell which are the males and females, and this is definitely a female. You can see if we peek in the brooder, they are the big white ones. And that's for two reasons. They are a few weeks older than the rest of the chicks. They are also just about the fastest growing breed of chicken around. Ideally, you would have chicks of all the same age and size together in a brooder, but I had to jump on the opportunity to get these American breasts while I could, and I already had the other chicks ordered coming uh, about two weeks later. Back there, you'll see we've got a bunch of Easter Eggers or Americanas, and I've also got some Red Stars or Production Reds, which are a hybrid based on the Rhode Island Red that's designed to lay a lot of eggs. And as you can see, we're having to keep this lid closed most of the time because with laying hens, they like to fly. So these guys are itching to get out of this box. Let me go grab that guy. So we're gonna go ahead and close that up for now so I don't lose anybody. But this is actually what I really wanted to talk to you guys about today was our brooder setup for our baby chicks. And this brooder was actually one of the very first projects on this farm. What we have here is nothing special. It's just a wooden box built out of plywood. It does have a very secure top and that is because we've had problems in the past with rats getting in here and killing baby chicks, especially when they're very small. So it's got this hardware cloth top, which since we have put this on, we've had zero problems with any kind of predators getting into it. And it's got solid sides, so it does retain quite a bit of heat inside the box. And then the open top is to ensure ventilation. And we can cover this and insulate it as need be for those really cold nights. It's got a center support here that helps hold these heat lamps in place. As you see, we've got two attached here so that we can heat both sides of the brooder. And depending on how many chicks we've got in here, I've got a double setup of food and water on both sides. So we've got food, water, food, water. This makes it very easy for every bird in there to access everything they need. We also make sure that there's plenty of floor space for when these chicks are very young. But as you can see, it's gotten quite small for the number of chicks we have now and it's really too crowded in there now. Now, a lot of people will recommend that you make your brooder the size that you need it to be for the entire life of your chicks. The problem I see with that is that if you have too much space, it's difficult to heat it properly and maintain a good constant temperature, and it's those fluctuations in temperature that will really affect the health of your birds. So I prefer a smaller space that I can heat and keep warm effectively. Also, a young bird doesn't need to travel far to find what it needs. 
in a bigger space, they're more likely to end up off in a corner where it's cold and potentially too far away from food and water where they can't really find it easily. And a young chick will get weak very quickly and will stop searching for those things. So by making everything readily available right in their face, basically, they have a much better chance of survival early on. So you can see it's gotten pretty crowded in this brooder. And this is really about as crowded as I would want it to get. They, there's still space for them to move around. And I've been watching very closely for any signs of fighting and there's really none of that. Everybody's getting along well. I'm also watching really closely when they sleep or when it gets cold that they're not piling on top of each other. So when it's cold, birds will pile up on top of each other, often right under the heat lamp in order to fight for that really warm spot. And when you allow your animal density to get this high, your chances of them piling up like that do increase. Luckily, so far we've had very little problems with that as long as we make sure it's warm. And when they get to the size where there's really not a whole lot of extra space that we get them moved out to the bigger brooder. So once these chicks are a little bit bigger and they have a good set of feathers on them, we upgrade them to this bigger brooder. And that's what we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down a good layer of shavings. We're gonna get all their stuff moved and then we'll transfer the birds. Now this side of the brooder is not gonna hold heat as well. It's got metal sides and a lot more airflow because it's got such a big open top. It's also not as predator safe. I really need to make sure that these birds are big enough and strong enough when they come into this space. Another thing we do to help retain a little bit of the heat is that we don't clean it out of between batches every time. We will let some of this bedding accumulate and compost on its own. And that composting action will provide a little bit of heat from the ground up. We do come in every couple days and put a light layer of pine shavings down on top of any manure buildup and that will continue to build that composting layer. I also feel like having a little bit of residual bacteria and manure from the last batch helps inoculate these birds um, and kind of build their immune systems for the future. These birds are intended to live outside and that'll be the next step is that we'll actually be rebuilding one of our mobile chicken coops and we'll show you that whole process when we get to it and then as soon as that's ready they'll be going out so these will be pasture raised and rotated daily so i really need them to have that strong immune system and be able to thrive out in the world <laughs> there to be a good layer of fresh shavings to cover up the dirty ones but I don't want it to be super thick where birds are gonna be getting caught up in it or try to burrow in it I prefer these bigger shavings the flakes versus the fine I just feel like they're a little less dusty but either will work for baby birds to choose a period of time where the weather is gonna be really nice if it's gonna be super windy or we're gonna have a big cold snap where we're into the freezing temperatures at night then I would choose to keep them in here a little bit longer fortunately we are experiencing some warmer temperatures this week so it's a really good time to get them out one thing that would really make this brooder better is if we designed a way for maybe this wall here to be hinged and then I could just lift it up and let the birds out as it is now I'm gonna have to open this lid and lift them all out one by one it's probably gonna get a little chaotic when we do that we may have some fly out that's uh, why we have the dogs put away right now okay so that's a good layer of shavings down the next step is to start moving all their stuff and what I'm gonna to wanna to move first are the heat lamps and make sure that I can get those nice and secured and start getting this floor warmed up a little bit. We're gonna try and also do this in the least stressful way we can. There's really no way to avoid some, even every day when I feed and water them, they get pretty worked up. So we're just gonna move slowly and calmly and hopefully nobody gets too freaked out. 
I suppose I gotta let him come in, but I'm not ready yet, so. <laughs> I'm going to unplug these temporarily so that I can secure the cords for them. They won't be hanging in the way. It's also just a little added security keeping these lights where they're supposed to be. I know a lot of people don't like these heat lamps anymore and I totally understand why I've seen the horrible stories of them burning down people's homes and you know at the very least being dangerous to your chicks and I totally understand that. That's why I take securing them very seriously. I will probably in the future upgrade to the safer plastic ones with the really protective dome. But you know, knock on wood, we haven't had a problem. I really watch my chicks like a hawk when they're in the brooder. They're right by our house. We walk by them, you know, 20 times a day. And if anything were to go wrong, I would hope that we would be able to see it in time to, to take care of it. But for now, these are the heat lamps I have. They've worked really well for me and I am aware of their dangers and we try to mitigate those risks as best we can. Cool, thank you. You're welcome. You can see even though I have this lifted, they still get quite a bit of <laughs> debris in their water. So that's something I do as they progressively get older as I raise these higher and higher and it helps mitigate that somewhat. I'm gonna go ahead and get their waters all freshened and filled before I move the birds so I don't have to get back in there in the next couple hours while they're getting settled in. Try to get these level, but that's not always possible in here. The next step will be to cover half of this so that as I put them in, they can't immediately just fly out on me. So we use this mesh cover. This keeps them in and allows lots of ventilation and then I can add a tarp for insulation later. So as you can see, this is nothing fancy. It's just something that we salvaged from the trash really. And every time we use it, it needs a few repairs because you know, plastic tears and I have naughty dogs that like to put their paws up on the side and they, they tear it. So I'll probably just throw a few zip ties on here to secure it a little bit better, but really it does the job. Okay, I think we're ready to move the birds. So here we go. All right, guys, let's move in. young birds, it's best to cup them gently between your hands and control their wings. They can really easily damage a wing. When a bird's older, it's fine to hang them from their legs, but these guys are still developing and could have some tendons that could pull if you do that, especially if they freak out. So just controlling them like this is really best. I like to count anytime I handle my birds. I also wanted to get all those big birds out of here first because they're the most likely to fly out and they're just kind of in the way. They're stepping all over the smaller birds uh, as they get riled up. So now I'm going to try and get these little guys out. the 
red stars are the production reds. You can see at this age, they look very similar to a Rhode Island red, and they will continue to because that is the base of this breed. But I believe they have some leghorn and some other genetics uh, mixed in, so they are a hybrid. They are designed to lay really well, and that's what we want. By going through and picking up each bird individually, I can judge their health really well. I can see if they're putting weight on, if they're about the same weight as their counterparts, and that they feel really good and strong. All my red stars out 26 that's what we got i ordered 25 got an extra one so we're still rocking the bonus chick i should have 25 of these americanas or easter eggers left so let's get them moved oh, another one now there's four <laughs> there they go Americanos got a little flighty and got out. I think uh, six or eight of them. So Daryl and I have routed most of them up. There might be one or two left out, so we're just gonna keep a close eye. If a baby bird wants to hide, there's not much I can do to get it to come out uh, other than wait. So hopefully they will hear the chirping of their flock and uh, come looking for friends. But otherwise, everything went well. Everybody's settling in. They seem to really be enjoying the added space. They're all mingling and running around and figuring out their new home. So that's all we had for today. As always, thanks for watching guys. If you'd like to see the video I did last year about how we raise chicks, you can check it out right here. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Bye.